Hello, my name is Jane Chiodini, a travel health specialist nurse working in the UK. I've developed this video to help travellers understand the risk of rabies. Please note if you're watching from outside the United Kingdom, your own national guidance may vary. Rabies is a virus transmitted by any warm-blooded mammal. Dogs are the main animals we hear of in rabies contact reports, but this page illustrates other examples. So the basic message when travelling abroad is, do not have any contact with animals. Easy to say but hard advice to follow if you're an animal lover. And for example that cute looking monkey is coming up to you for a feed of banana. But a quick nip on your hand could put you at risk. And of course we can never predict any unprovoked attack from an animal. This map illustrates the countries at risk from rabies from the World Health Organization. Red area is high risk, orange is medium risk and cream is low risk. Rabies virus can get into the human through an infected animal biting or scratching you. But because that virus is in the animal's saliva, even a lick onto an open wound could be a risk. The virus then travels through the nervous system up to the brain. And once the brain is infected, then most human cases will sadly die. The virus can travel through the nervous system in days, weeks, months and rarely years but it's also relevant where on your body the contact occurs. A bite on your foot and the virus will need to travel a lot further than the bite to the head area. Although rabies in travellers is fortunately not too common, we've had a few tragic reports of people returning home to the UK developing rabies and dying. Searching the news online will bring up reports of these cases. Rabies vaccine is available for travellers but is not available as a National Health Service provision. A course of three vaccines, however, will give you long-term protection and the human body will develop antibodies which means your immune system will create some protection to the disease. It usually takes up to four weeks to give these doses, but your travel health advisor can give you more information. Because for some people, if you're running short of time, there is now the option of completing a course in just one week. Even if you have a full course of vaccine before you go away, you still need two doses of rabies vaccine after a potential exposure. But what we know is that there are no reports of any travellers who had received rabies vaccine pre-exposure ever dying following exposure to rabies virus. Now whether or not you have rabies vaccine before you travel, the management of a potential rabies wound is essential in every single case. You can never assume in a rabies risk country that the contact animal wasn't infected, so you must wash that wound with soap and running water. The World Health Organization recommends to do this for 15 minutes. This will help to eliminate some of the virus at the wound surface. Then add an antiseptic, something like povidone iodine is good. If this isn't available, then alcohol such as gin or whiskey could be a reasonable substitute. You then need to seek medical help without delay. Again important whether or not you've had rabies vaccine before you travelled. Those who received a full course of three rabies vaccine before they travelled will need two doses of rabies vaccine as post-exposure treatment. Those who have no rabies vaccine or an incomplete course of vaccine will need to have four doses of rabies vaccine and depending on the severity of risk may also need human rabies immunoglobulin as well. This provides immediate antibody protection to the infection as the vaccine protection will take some time to develop. This immunoglobulin will only give short term benefit though and rabies vaccine must be given. This is essential and the mainstay of rabies post exposure treatment. The big problem however regarding obtaining appropriate treatment is that in some countries it's very difficult to get hold of vaccine and even more so rabies immunoglobulin. Travellers have been known to have to fly home early or travel to another country to obtain it, which in itself causes immense stress and great cost. 
Of recent times, we've also had reports of fake vaccine in some resource poor countries. So in conclusion, please consider rabies vaccine before you travel to an area that puts you at risk. And if you do have vaccine, make sure you always take your travel record card with you. Make sure you don't initiate contact with any animal and avoid any potential risk of such. If you do have contact, make sure you treat the wound immediately and seek medical help straight away. And lastly, when you come back home to the UK, make sure you visit your GP surgery and explain what has happened. If this is out of hours, take advice from the out of hours service. There are some interesting resources about rabies and other travel health topics. Links to them can be found on my website.